that Mr. Wu was such a dog. I can't believe he gave me this much food. I don't know how we're gonna eat it all. Well, it looks like you're doing a pretty good job. I'm sorry. I can smoke or I can eat. Which do you want? I don't know. I'll let you know after 50 pounds, okay? <laughs> you know, we, we haven't had a chance to talk with the kids running around and everything, but all I could think about when I was in the hospital was getting back home to you. You know, I was gonna tell you this, but one night while you were away, I actually went into your bedroom and smelled your pillow. <laughs> You did? Yes, I know. I know it's silly, but I just wanted to be close to you. I kept fantasizing that the two of us were horseback riding naked on the beach. That's like some hokey perfume ad. Well, hey, look, I, I didn't say it was original. I mean, I wasn't going to submit it for a Clio award or anything. But anyway, the point is, I was chasing you. I'm on this big, beautiful-looking stallion, and you're right ahead of me on this little lame pony. You know... Hartman, I've been thinking that since we do have this enormous attraction for one another, that we have to be very, very careful that our relationship isn't just physical. Well, hey, I can't be positive since we've never really done anything, but I can tell you this. I'm very, very attracted to your mind. Oh, really? In what way? Well, for one thing, not every woman with a bust as large as yours is intelligent. <laughs> Don't believe I'm hearing this. Where do you get this stuff? I mean, nobody talks like that anymore. You could be executed. You should be executed. No, I'm sorry if I put it the wrong way. I'm just trying to tell you that I am very, very attracted to all of you. I mean, if I could see your liver, I, I, I'd, I'd be after that, too. Unfortunately, I'm reduced to having to work with this shallow surface stuff. But what I see, I'd like to get to know every inch of. Is that so terrible? You know, I really don't think that you have any appreciation of who I was professionally before we met. No. Oh, I've read your stuff. I think it's great. Well, thank you. But did you also know that I happened to win the Peabody Award for my series on black lung disease in the Appalachians? No, I didn't know that. Well, I did. So you can fantasize about that for a while. Okay. <laughs> you're accepting the Peabody Award, and you're naked. You are truly, truly hopeless. I mean, you have this innocent exterior, but you have a totally one-track mind. Oh, come here. Are you such a stupid girl? You can't tell that I'm falling in love with you? You are? What do you think that I would let you move in my house and ruin my life just to get cookies? Maybe. Oh, come on, you crazy? There are cookies everywhere. I'm not interested in that anymore. I'm only interested in you. Well, then why does everything have to be so sexual? Well, because I have a problem in the emotional area where you're concerned. Why? Why? Because you scare me to death, that's why. I mean, you're the kind of girl that men drive their cars into trees over. Let's face it, you know, I'm, I'm not in exactly the greatest position here. I'm just coming out of a divorce. My ex-wife is dating a woman. I got two children to think about. Well, you know, I'm not in the greatest position myself. I mean, I don't have any money. I have no home. I have no clothes. My father's in prison. What do you mean I'm the kind of woman that men drive into trees over? Oh, come on. You know you've left piles of broken men strewn all over the globe, shot clean through the heart with little trickles of blood running out of the corners of their mouth. I just don't want to be added to that rubble. Excuse me, but I think that I'm the one that's been the victim of bad relationships. I mean, when it comes to finding men who are jackasses, I'm like a scud missile. <laughs> Falling in love with you, too. It's gonna bring nothing but pain and misery. I know. What are we gonna do? We're gonna make love and then kill each other. Oh, God. I should have gotten an apartment when you were gone. No, forget about that. You're staying here. For now. No, forever. Let's go upstairs. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to wake up your kids. Okay, well, then let's stay downstairs. But let's not stop what we're doing, okay? Oh. No matter what. I don't want to make love in the same house where your boys are. Oh, no, no, it's all right. No. They don't care. That's how they got here. <laughs> don't feel right about it. I... No, believe me, they won't mind. I'm their father. They want me to be happy. They're rooting for me. Oh, God, is that the doorbell? Just ignore it. They'll go away. Mm -hmm. Oh, it might be something important. No, it's not. It's just some stupid teenager selling candy bars. I already bought some. They're not any good. They don't even have nuts. Mm -hmm. Maybe you better get it. Oh. All right. All right, somebody's gonna pay for this. Somebody's gonna get a big old candy bar rammed down their throat. What? Jailbreak, is it? You're not escaping, are you? Oh, don't be silly. Of course, I'm not escaping. I got a furlough. And the first thing I decided to do was come see my best girl. Oh, I can't believe it. I'm gonna take a look at you. Oh, my God, you look wonderful. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, you look wonderful too, baby. Even though your blouse is a little off center. Oh my God! Oh, we were, we were um, just doing a little rough housing. Ah, well. Oh, Papa, I want you to meet somebody. This is the man I've been telling you about so much, John Hartman. This is my dad. He's my boss. Ah. All right, John. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too, sir. <laughs> uh, sorry about the problem with the shirt here. Gee, it looks like the rough housing was getting a little out of hand there, huh? Oh. I guess the cavalry arrived just in time. <laughs> uh, come in the kitchen. We've got tons of Chinese food. No, 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 oh, no, really? no, come no. On. I don't want to barge in on your evening. It's obvious you guys got plans. Oh, no, we didn't, did we? No, we were just sitting around, talking, eating. Rough housing? <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I just want you to know I'm in town. You can reach me at the Fair Price Motel. The Fair Price Motel? Oh, no way. You are staying in that rat hole where I stayed. Well, Fair Price. Well, he's going to stay with us, isn't he? Well, sure, that'd be fine. We got a new sofa. As a matter of fact, Miss Lula's gone to visit her sister. You may have my room. I will take the sofa. Get out of here. Did you hear that? Take her room? Yes. Uh, did you ever meet such a selfless, wonderful girl in your life. She's very nice. Nice? Hell, she gave you the shirt off her back. Yeah, well, perhaps figuratively. Oh, I almost forgot. I, I brought you a little gift. Good. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a spoon rest. I made it myself in ceramics class. Yeah, I should have made you a macrame keychain, John. I could make one in an afternoon. I was thoughtless of me. No, that's all right. Yeah, I tell you, these minimum security prisons are hell. 250 guys waiting around for one tennis court. <laughs> you have to play golf with ladies' clubs. And, and sometimes they even cancel brandy hour with no notice whatsoever. No wonder guys keep going over the hedge. Come on, huh? Yeah, you know, Georgie Ann, you know, she's, she's, she's got a... Tremendous amount of pride. Yeah. This thing that happened to me, being railroaded on an embezzling charge, well, it, it's really been hard on her. But even when she was little, you know, I'd be defending some gangster. You know, I'm a lawyer, that's my job, and it'd be in the papers. And some kid on the playground would criticize me. Georgie Ann would take him out. I mean, she'd beat the tar out of him. <laughs> no, the, the thing that amuses me is that at the same time, she was also the class queen. <laughs> That's some kind of combination, isn't it? Class queen? I don't think I've ever heard of that title. What is... Sure you yeah. <laughs> have. You know, queen of the prom. Oh. Harvest Moon. Exactly. Homecoming. Sure. Yeah, she won it all. That doesn't surprise me at all. When I used to take her to the park when she was a baby, I always felt so bad for the other mothers. Because it's so obvious that their babies, compared to Georgie, were such dogs. Ah, oh, that's terrible. Well, it's the truth. I even used to have to pull her little bonnet down over her face just to keep the other little girls from feeling bad. Stop. What? He used to actually stand up on his folding chair and wolf whistle at my piano recital. <laughs> <laughs> Two must have been quite a pair. You mind if I smoke? A cigar? Actually, John doesn't like smoking. In fact, I'm trying to quit myself. Oh, no, no, that's all right. Yeah, I'll just open up the doors and turn on the fan. Oh, hell, just forget it. It's not worth it if you're going to have to hose down the kitchen afterwards. No, no, no. <laughs> that's all right, sir. It's just a little hard on my sinuses, but go ahead. You... You remind me of a guy that was in my cell block before I went to minimum security. He was always worried about his health, too. You know, you could never line up with him because uh, he hated secondary smoke. He never wanted to work outdoors because the sun would give him skin cancer. And above all, he got the cafeteria to take the sugar out of all the desserts. So finally, one day, a bunch of the inmates got together and they killed him. <laughs> now he doesn't have to worry about his health anymore. Oh, Pop, that reminds me, I'm gonna have to reorder your cigar shipment. You must be almost out by now. Oh, don't bother. I uh, may even be able to buy them in person. What do you mean? I mean, if everything goes right, your old man may be the first American to own a McDonald's franchise in Cuba. You're kidding. Mm. How did you pull that off? I got a couple of friends in prison. 
One of them is an accountant named Manny. He's a real top-notch guy and a very fine craftsman. He made a double spoon rest. <laughs> anyway, I figure maybe this is something I can do in my retirement. Pop, you have two years still left on your sentence. Well, actually, honey, uh, my sentence has been reduced. What do you mean? I mean, I'm out. For good? <laughs> Forever. <laughs> Anyway, about seven, the bookies start calling. I mean, the man must be some kind of a nerve center for all of the gambling syndicates in North America. And Miss Lottie acts as if she has no idea what her father does for a living. Well, what exactly does he do? Well, I don't know. He's been disbarred, but now everybody who calls our house is called Louie. Anyway, about three o'clock this morning, they started making this revenge list of all the people they need to repay for what they did to him. I mean, it's unbelievable they're like this father-daughter team in Paper Moon. That was a good movie. Very well written. Okay, the end of conversation. Good morning. What did you need, Miss Starr? The senator is on his way in. I just want to remind you that you both have your monthly date with him tonight at Harry's Bar. Was there anything else, Miss Starr? Well, you did have a phone message, Mr. Hartman. Oh. I forgot to write from who. Shoot. There is just so much to remember in this job, you know? Like who called, who came by, who wrote a letter. I just feel like maybe I ought to pick one area of expertise, you know? Like who called, and just stick with that. Thank you, Miss Starr. That'll be all. Good morning, Senator. Good morning, Miss Starr. Thank you, Mr. Carlson, for driving me to the emergency room. Hey, I'm just glad you're okay, sir. I have something very personal to discuss with you. What is it, Senator? What it is, is this implant I got is not working out. Implant, sir? Yes, implant. <clears throat> you know, when you get to be my age... Well, Mrs. Smithers, who, as you know, is Miss Tennessee and is much younger than me, thought it was a good idea. I had some hope of reviving our sex life. Senator, what's wrong with it? I, I mean, your implant. What's wrong is that lately, every time the least little thing happens, it activates. It activates? <laughs> you know, inflates with air, Mr. Hart. I mean, in a big way. It can even happen when I'm asleep. I woke up this morning, I thought I was in a pub tent. <laughs> Just call my doctor and tell him I want this thing removed as soon as possible. It's not dangerous, it's just embarrassing. <laughs> well, of course, I could put someone's eye out. Senator, no one need know about it. That's what I get for going to a government physician in a government hospital. Well, you know anything the government has anything to do with is bound to be defective. <laughs> Those are the same people who said Agent Orange won't hurt you. That the blood supply is safe. Well, I say, let them walk a mile with the Hindenburg in their pants. Then we'll talk. When I see the children have the traditional ice cream sodas right before dinner, favorite of parents everywhere. Thank you, Miss Lobby. They promised me they wouldn't spoil their appetites. And have you boys done your homework? I'm working on mine right now. See, I got four threes, three tens, and a four, five, and a six equals 57. It's also Jim. This guy's gonna clean me up. He's gonna be a player. Hey, look at this. Harbin, I found a horse for you. John Stallion in the ninth. Uh, don't bet on him. He's a dud. The horse looked good going out of the gate, but he doesn't perform in a stretch. Thanks, Pop. I'll make a note of that. Mm -hmm. Hey, Elliot, where did you get all this money? Miss Lottie gave me $10 for when my tooth fell out. $10? Didn't you get 50 cents from the tooth fairy? I don't like that fairy. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Lottie, you do not give a child $10 for losing his teeth. What does he get for brushing them? His own credit card? I got $10 for an allowance when I was his age. I didn't think it was excessive. Uh. Hello? I'm sure you didn't. You obviously were raised with a different set of morals than most people. Oh, hi, Louie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, got it right here. Got it right here. Uh, Pop's gonna go for Shindig in the fifth, and I'll try John Stallion in the ninth. 
Yeah, I know it's 50 to 1, but it's night racing and it's a full moon. Oh, hang on, I got, got another call. Hello? Don't I ask who's calling? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's here. Just a second. It's your parole officer. Hey, Jack. How's it going? <laughs> Couldn't be better. Couldn't be better. Hey, Dad, can I go to the stop and go with Mr. Lloyd tonight and sit on his lap and drive? Sure, son. And while you're out, why don't you pick up a handgun for yourself, too? Can I see you in the living room? Yeah, those cooking lessons in prison finally paid off. I made me one hell of an omelet this morning. You've opened up a gambling casino in my kitchen. Oh, no, and a week ago, my son didn't even know what a bookie was. Now he wants to be one. <laughs> Listen, I don't mind your dad visiting. I just don't want him to be a bad influence. I'm sorry you don't get him or his charm. You know, I was going to ask you to take him out with the senator with you tonight. No, but I, I guess you're just too good. We only go alone with the senator, OK? Oh, come on, Hartman. It would mean so much to me. He hasn't done like anything like this in two years. Wait a minute. Didn't they have brandy hour in prison? Oh, it's not the same thing. <laughs> Besides, he thinks you don't like him. He's very perceptive. <laughs> just go along for the ride. He won't even talk. No way. Uh -uh. I'm sorry. That's final. You know what you miss most in prison? Oh, I don't mean those ordinary things like uh, going to baseball games or buying yourself a new car or smelling the fresh cut grass in your own backyard. Uh, the, the thing you miss most, and, and I don't mean this in a prurient way, is a woman's breast. That's beautiful. I mean, when you live with men all the time, you start to remember real fast what a wonderful thing a woman's breast actually is. I mean, what else can you find in this whole world that is more beautiful? beautiful or has more going for it. What else can you find that is so wonderful to touch, look at, rest your head on, and feeds babies? Maybe it's time to start thinking about that coffee now. He's right. A woman's breast is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, at a certain age, a man's hoo-ha is not worth diddling. What about those redskins? How do you think they're going to do this year? Who cares? This man's been to prison, Mr. Hartman. How can you expect him to talk about football scores when he's probably just getting over the trauma of being someone's girlfriend? <laughs> How long were you in for, Mr. Lottie? No, no, just two years, Senator. It really wasn't so bad, although I did miss having my own golf cart. Sure, you make the best of it because we don't talk about our problems like their generation does. Mm, yeah. These boys have no idea what it's like to grow old and to wake up one morning with a 50-foot hair growing out of your ear. True, all too true. The fire still burns, but sometimes you just don't have the equipment. Well, I wouldn't know about that. The women now are getting so demanding. Yeah. If you're a man, it's not enough anymore to raise the flag every day. You've got to salute, too. Are you all right, Senator? <laughs> okay. Uh-oh. What is it? What's going on? It's the return of the Hindenburg. What the hell? It's his implant. Implant? Don't ask. Senator, can you get up and walk out? No, Mr. Davis, I cannot get up and walk out. At least not without looking like an oil rig. What kind of implant? You know, male. It keeps inflating on its own. Are you serious? I never heard of anything like that. Let me talk to the bartender. Maybe he'll clear the bar out for us. It's not going to explode or anything, is it? Don't talk to the bartender. Are you crazy? You want to be on the 11 o'clock news? How in the world are we going to get out of here? Okay, I got an idea. We're going to stand up slowly and form a circle around and stick together as tight as we can. Senator, just slide your chair back. Mr. Lottie, stand up. Grab my arm. Mr. Lottie, stand up. What the hell are we doing here? I'm on parole. Okay, now, everybody, let's just try to stay in step and uh, walk like bridesmaids. All right, everybody, out of the way. Secret Service, we just got a call from the White House. We have to get this man back. He's a very important man. Stand back. I can't believe it. The one night I let my pop go out with you and you get into a fight. Ow, excuse me. I did not get into a fight. I told you there was this little short-tempered Neanderthal who thought I was trying to be a wise guy. 
Then the senator turned sideways and accidentally knocked him off his bar stool. No, you can't have my father's probation revoked. It's okay. My parole officer is cool. I just wish the police hadn't called him because now he's going to have to monitor you guys to see if you're a fit family for me to stay with. <laughs> Gee, I really hope we'll be able to live up to his standards. How long till that McDonald's franchise comes through? Two weeks, Tom. Two weeks? That's no problem for us, is it, Hartman? All right, well, two weeks, okay. But no calls from Louie after nine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Hartman. There'll be a little something extra under your pillow tonight. Thanks, but I've already got $10. <laughs> well, I think this is where I came in. <clears throat> I'll let you kids go on with your... Rough housing. Mm. Oh, 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 I forgot to watch the late night recap of the rest. Is Pop, you want to watch? No, no, no. You can tell me about it in the morning. And passing the first turn, it's me. Where the Pop. hell did you get that thing? From a fine gal close to uh, don't you remember floor. this? This was that old black and white you brought home when I was a little girl. You and your friends used to sit around and watch it and argue about politics and world events. You used to call everybody by their first names. Adlai, Winston, Ike. I remember. You know, I thought you were a friend with... Presidents and kings. You did? Yeah. But now that I'm grown, I just want you to know how proud I am that you are so much more. Good night, Queenie. Pop. I love you. I love you, too. your style I don't think I'll ever be able to repay you for letting him stay here with us it's just been me and him all my life I know do you think there's any room in there for me too oh I think I can squeeze you in <laughs> I hope so because tonight the senator was talking about getting old and I just realized that I don't want to waste all my days on fantasies well you know someday I've been having a little fantasy myself. You tell me about it. Well, my fantasy is to make each and every one of yours come true. That's a very fine fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> and coming into the last turn, it's John Stallion on the outside. John Stallion pulling away from the back. John Stallion at 50 to 1 is tearing up the turf. And the winner is John Stallion. <laughs>